Welcome back, Happy Fabricators. Thanks for tuning in. Today we're gonna to be taking a look at Amazon's cheap solution to sticking aluminum together. We're gonna to find out if I wasted thousands of dollars on TIG welders or not. Now I know there's a lot of you guys anticipating our belt grinder build that's gonna be built with the remainder of our table saw welding table, but that is still in the works. I wanna take a little bit of time and make sure that the design is halfway decent for the materials we have to work with and just kind of come up with a good solid solution and not totally haggard something together for you guys. So let's get started with this stuff. So what we have here is some Alumaloy is the brand from Amazon and these are brazing or soldering rods and technically I think it's soldering because the instructions say these things melt at around 725 degrees, something like that. And I believe the definition of brazing is anything above 840 degrees. Supposedly all we need is these rods, something to clean it with. We've got a stainless brush here and a map gas or propane torch. Let's give it a go and see if they're worth their weight. Okay, so I've played with these things a little bit already and something that I've noticed is that you definitely have to heat up your base metal. So we're gonna be standing our piece off of this heat sink or the welding table. First we're gonna do a quick little clean with our stainless brush. Now you can use stainless brush to clean your aluminum. Some acetone probably wouldn't hurt to get any oils, to prep that material. And then like I said, you're gonna need a map gas or propane torch. And I will link all this stuff in the description below to links if you guys are interested in trying this stuff out whenever we see what kind of results we got. Now something I've noticed in playing around with this stuff is it does not really break through that oxide layer itself. So it works a lot better if you actually get in there and agitate it just a little bit to break up that oxide layer. Let's heat the other side up and go around it. See it flowing out real nice, getting there and just kind of agitate that to break that oxide layer off the top. Now, if we were using a flux, probably would not be required to agitate it and get in there, but since we don't have a flux, and supposedly you don't need it on this stuff, we're just gonna kinda get in there and break that oxide layer up so that it can bind to the base material a little better. And it doesn't look too bad. We got a nice little bead around there. We're gonna let this guy cool off, and then we'll bead on it and maybe throw some water in it and see how it's sealed and performed. Just while we're waiting on that, I wanna show you just kinda what these things look like. It's very similar to a TIG rod. They're not actually round, they're kind of oval shaped and they look like they've been kind of like cast or poured into some sort of form or mold. But they were roughly around an eighth inch or three millimeters in thickness and then probably about 18 inches long. Now I know there's several brands of these guys to choose from. But while we're waiting for this, um, let's actually break open some more coupons and just do a straight T-joint to torture test as well. Use some of our Weld Metals Online coupons. These are great for practicing your actual TIG welding. And I've got a 10% off coupon that I will leave down in the description for these guys as well. Okay, so we're gonna let this guy cool off so we can flip it around and do another little clean fillet on the other side. But while we're doing that, I kinda wanna read off some of the specifications that this stuff has, just so you've got an idea. And I will leave this whole thing down in the description so you can read the specifications. But they really tout this stuff. They say that you can use it on aluminum, you can use it on pop metal, you can use it on aluminum, pop metal, galvanized steel, no flux needed, antiques, toys, gutters, rims. I don't know if I would recommend rims. Soldering your rims together does not sound like a wise thing to do. Um, refrigeration coils, belts, housings. 
I will leave all this stuff up to your discretion whether or not you try it on that. But supposedly this stuff comes in at 39,000 PSI, which is kind of impressive for a solder joint. And yada, yada, yada. I will leave this entire thing down here for you guys to read in the description below if you guys want to see the specifications on these things. But this looks like it is cool enough that we can flip it over and do the other side. Okie dokie, so this guy is cooled off. We're gonna stick it in our little vise here and we are going to do the water test, see if she is sealed up. Fill her up to the brim there. And as you can see, we're looking pretty dry here. And oh, oh, maybe not. We've got the tiniest bit of seepage right down here. You can see some moisture coming through right there in the corner. So I probably just didn't get quite enough heat into that side. That's the big thing with soldering is both pieces have to have pretty equal heat for everything to wet in properly. But now we're going to take this thing and beat on it and just kind of see what kind of abuse it'll take. So we'll set it up in the vise here. And... So as you can see here, we're crushing our tube, but we have not delaminated anywhere. So that's pretty good. I wouldn't necessarily use it for any structural application, but there are definitely some applications, maybe patching an aluminum hole or something like that. Let's take our flat joint here. That's pretty good. We bent that piece over completely and we don't have any sort of delaminations on either side. I want to stop and give a quick shout out to Hyperlight. They sent us out some LED lights to give a try and hopefully improve your guys' viewing quality. I want to say a couple things. These were pretty good quality lights, but there were two notes that if you decide that you want these lights that I would take note of, they do not come with any plugins or outlets, so that's something you'll have to purchase yourself. And the pigtails they come with are only two feet long to go between each light, so you might have to get some more wiring if you want to spread those out and daisy chain them. But overall, they're good lights. There's a discount code and link in the description. Let's get on with the video. So now both these things were both pretty clean coupons. We had some brand new stuff from Weld Metals and then we also had um, our check of round tube here. But I wanna do some more kind of seasoned aluminum and maybe even just kind of like a more real world, world application. So I've got a dirty old license plate here. We'll scrub a little piece of that, maybe puncture a hole in it and see if we can't patch it poke like maybe a 3 16 ish diameter hole through it. You can tell that's a thin lens. Not the most beautiful thing, but we'll plug the hole up. Another thing I mentioned was it was compatible with galvanized steel. So I got this hanger here and I just want to give it a go and just see if it'll do what they say it will. Okay, so we have this thing cooled down pretty much now, and this is our galvanized truss hanger to our aluminum. And let's tear on it a little bit, see what happens, see if we can delaminate it. Take my awl here. And this is only 16th inch. I'm gonna break my awl, let me get something heavier duty. This is only 16th inch aluminum plate to 16th inch galvanized steel. Or pop metal but 
Oh, there you go. It finally just delaminated. Okay, we were able to separate it. I mean, it was actually pretty strong. You can see how much this was a flat plate and I had to deform it and lift that up that much before it actually delaminated from the parts. So I'm actually semi impressed for having those two dissimilar metals. So just for clarification, this is soldering, it is not welding. The primary two differences is welding is more of a molecular bond and soldering is more of a mechanical bond. Well, so when you're welding aluminum together, you are melting your two base metals and adding a filler and those things are all mixing up molecularly and melting together and becoming one in themselves. Whereas soldering, it's more like glue. You're relying on a mechanical bond. So that's why it's really important for stuff like this to get better results to actually do good prep work. So maybe do a little bit of sanding, scuff it up, and make sure you get all of your oxides off and decontaminate it from any oils and stuff, just like you would do when you go to glue something. Overall, I think these are a success. I'm definitely gonna throw some in my, in my emergency kit when I'm wheeling off road and stuff like that. And I could see the application of this being used in some real finite stuff. I mean, like this guy here, it's still hot. You can lay down a nice, clean, small, little, low profile bead. And if it's something that's got to be held together and isn't structural, it may be more visually appealing or maybe even more possible with a solution like this. So like I said before, I'm going to leave links down in the description to all these things that we used here to make this happen in the event that this, this is something that you want to try out or use yourself. Now, I appreciate all the love and comments we've been getting on the DIY welding fixture table and we are definitely going to be continuing that series. There are more build videos going to be coming out to make that even better. So stay tuned for that. The belt sander and all those things. I really appreciate all the ideas and the support I've been getting for that. So once again, if you guys want to see more fabrication content, click some of the links that are going to pop up here. If you want to be notified of upcoming videos, hit that subscribe button and ring the bell so that you will have notifications turned on and go build something guys.